Good morning, our preteens. Pastor Dyson here, back with another Sunday lesson. I hope you guys are doing well this morning, and I thank you so much that you're joining me here for another Sunday lesson. As usual, I have some announcements regarding our Minecraft Mondays and Free Talk Fridays this week coming at the end of our lesson, so make sure you stay tuned for those so you don't miss anything. Links to our Clip of the Week playlist and Sunday lesson playlist are down in the description so you can go catch up on anything that you may have missed. So without further ado, let's get into our lesson. Today we're going to be talking about time and what to do when we have so much stuff to do and we can't figure out how to find the time to get it all done when everything is just so overwhelming like when there's homework to do your jump shot to perfect and chores around the house all at the same time sometimes we just have so many things on our plate which leads me to our question of the day so every every sunday lesson we have a question one question that we seek to answer and we go to the Bible and we look through and we try to answer our questions. So the question of the day is, what does God say to do when I'm too busy? We've all had moments in our lives. Maybe that's you right now, or maybe it, it was you, or maybe it will be you. You'll have moments when you're too busy and you're wondering, what does God have to say about when I'm too busy? And so my first question for you actually is, what questions do you have about stuff stuff? You have to do for example maybe there's stuff at school to that you have to do that takes a lot of time but you don't really see the point in doing it maybe you have chores around the house that you have to do but you want to watch netflix or youtube instead for me i make arc preteens youtube videos obviously but i don't always feel like it and so my question is why can't i just play video games instead of making a video and so pause here and think what are some questions that you have about stuff that you have to do we have a lot of choices to make about how we use our time. And since it's always a good idea, or since it's always good, I should say, to ask what God might have to say about our choices, we're going to explore what he says we should do with our time. Because every question we can take to God. This is Shane Hosani. Shane Hosani was one of, our, one of our archetype youth leaders. Shane knows how to juggle three things at once. Uh, when he can get going and stay focused, he can keep all three items up in the air. But what would happen if I walked by and threw a fourth threw in a fourth object? That would probably cause some chaos. He'd get confused and overwhelmed and not know how to react. And so life is a lot like juggling. We have a lot of things to manage and balance that sometimes it can feel overwhelming when something unexpected gets thrown in at us. Expectations can pile up and threaten to eat us alive sometimes. Your teachers expect you to spend lots of time on your homework. Your coach wants you to practice two hours a day uh, your piano teacher expects you to put in an hour at the keyboard every single day. Your friends want to hang out or play video games. And your parents want you to do your chores or go on a family trip. There's a lot of things that we're managing. There's a lot of things that we're juggling. Some days are just too busy. And I get it. So what are you supposed to do when the days get too busy? What are you supposed to do when that happens? What does God say to do when you're too busy, more importantly? Let's see if we can find out from the Bible. Of course, we got to go to the Bible. It's the best, it's the best source. And so when you get too busy juggling stuff, some of it is bound to hit the floor, kind of similar to this guy in what looks like an office. When you juggle too many things, eventually you're going to slip up, you're going to lose focus, you're going to make a mistake, and everything's going to come crashing down. You can't handle everything coming at you sometimes. And so this is true not only in our lives, but in the lives of other people. Everyone experiences this feeling at least once in their life. For instance, imagine what would happen if the pilot of a big plane, you know, you're flying to London or whatever, imagine if your pilot got too busy or so distracted that he or she couldn't pay attention uh, to all the, the uh, dials in the plane's cockpit. What would happen? I, I think there'd, some be, there'd be some disastrous results. And if the co-pilot uh, got distracted and the navigator, because I know you're like, there's more than just a pilot in a plane. What if everyone in the cockpit was distracted or too busy? Some things could go wrong. And so my next question for you that I want you to think about is think of something that might go wrong if someone is too busy. So think about a job or, or, or uh, an activity that if someone got too busy, bad things could happen. Think of, a, think of a profession like a plumber, a soccer star, a school bus driver, a teacher, an astronaut, whatever. And think about what could go wrong if they got too busy, if they were unfocused in their job. So pause here and, and take a moment to think about that. When, when people are too busy, bad things happen. I don't think that's any surprise to us. So right now, let's look at three situations of too busy that happened in biblical times. And then you're going to rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 of how bad or how good you think each of these situations and the advice that they were given were. And so our first too busy person is Moses. 
And while Moses was leading God's people, you know, he led them out of Egypt and through the wilderness, as he's leading, Moses was spending all day, every single day, helping people settle their arguments. But his father, father-in-law, Jethro, he had an idea, and we can read about it in Exodus 18, verse 18, and then 21 to 22. Jethro says, you're going to wear yourself out, and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself, but select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. They should always be available to solve the people's common disputes, but have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. So what do you think? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being terrible and 10 being like great, awesome, how helpful do you think the advice uh, that Jethro gave Moses was? And a another question to think about while you're rating, uh, you can also pause here, rewind if you need to read it again. If you had a friend who was too busy and was worn out, kind of like Moses, how would you give the same advice Jethro gave? And what would you say? How would you say it? Pause here and take a second to, to first of all, rate the advice that Jethro gave, and then to answer this question for yourself. Jesus himself had something to say to a woman who got very, very busy fixing a meal for him and his disciples. Mary and Martha actually invited Jesus over to their house and all the disciples for a meal. And then, well, listen to this. We can read about it in Luke 10, verse 39 to 42. Her sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how fair do you think Jesus' advice was for Martha? 1 being, that was really unfair advice, or 10 being, okay, that was like super fair advice. Because everything Jesus ever says to anyone is motivated by love. So he wasn't being mean to Martha. Jesus loves us, and he loved Martha in that situation, but he's just letting her know that the most important thing in that house wasn't the food, it wasn't the meal that was being prepared, but that it was actually being with Jesus. That was the most important thing. Martha was so busy fixing up the food that she missed out on time with Jesus. And in our third passage, we're going to hear what happens when two busy people actually come to Jesus with their problems. And this comes from Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So if you have a ton of homework, plus a science fair project to get ready, and you're late for tuba practice, you're probably going to be pretty weary. And so think about this question critically for a second. What can Jesus actually do for you? Jesus can't go to tuba practice for you. He can't finish your science fair project for you. I mean, he probably could because he's God, but he most likely is not going to because that's not the way he works. But what practically could Jesus actually do for you? Pause here, rewind if you have, if you have to, and take a second to think about that. People back in biblical times were busy too. Being busy isn't anything new to the 21st century. They had lots to do, and they had a lot of re religious rules to follow. Plus, some religious leaders kept piling on even more rules and more rules for them to follow. Jesus says when we're feeling weary, we should come to him, and that, he and that when we do, he'll give us rest for our souls. When we're too busy, one way he gives us rest is by helping us figure out what to keep doing, and then also what to stop Doing. There's some things we need to keep doing, but there is some things that we can stop doing. Remember, if you're juggling, but a bunch of things are falling down as you're trying to juggle, that's because you have too many items. You're trying to balance too many things at once in the air. And if you're dropping things in real life, ask Jesus what he thinks you should do, what you should keep doing, and what you should stop doing, more importantly. We can always come to Jesus with questions like these. He may tell you to do what Moses did, ask other people for help. He may uh, tell you what he told Martha, that you need to quit doing the things that are keeping you away from him. We, 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 need, we, need, we need to approach Jesus not only with our problems, but we also need to approach him uh, because of our problems. And when we stop these things, when we stop doing these things, we can come to him. And maybe he'll even invite you to remember that he loves you just the same 
and that you can turn to him for rest and strength no matter when in your life you are and no matter where in the world you are. But you'll never know what he's going to say unless you actually ask him, which leads me to my big idea for our Sunday lesson. So every Sunday lesson, we have a big idea. It's one sentence that kind of summarizes the teaching, uh, kind of answers the question of the day, if you will. And so our big idea for today is when you're too busy, ask God what to drop and what to keep. Because he's God. He knows what's important. He knows the future and what you need to keep doing. But he also knows what you can stop doing and, and kind of put on hold or, or put to the side or just quit altogether. And Jesus loves you and he's going to help you if you ask. And he wants to walk with you and comfort you when times are tough. And then he also wants to celebrate you when times and things are going great. God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. He's always there. He never leaves. And so just before we, we wrap up and close everything, I want to ask you a, a one last question. You can pause here if you need a second. Think about a time where you felt too busy and how did that make you feel and why? Pause here if you need a second. When we get too busy, we can remember that Jesus loves us and that he can help us with what we should do and not do. And so we are never too busy to spend time with him because he's going to help us organize our time. He's going to show us what to keep doing and what to stop doing. He has the answer. And so we discovered today that Jesus loves us and he wants us to find soul soothing rest in him. And that's true whether we're busy or whether we have a bunch of free time on our hands. I reckon a lot of you guys have free time, uh, you know, because of quarantine. And so uh, a lot of us do have free time. And so he wants to be with us when we're busy and he wants to be with us when we got nothing to do. He just enjoys spending time with us. But either way, we can go to him. And that's what we're going to do right now through prayer. So if you guys could pray with me, bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another Sunday lesson, God, that we can come together to learn more about your word, uh, that we can learn what it means not only to be busy, but to find true rest in you, God. And so I thank you that you are a good God who gives true rest, that you don't uh, you don't leave us, you don't forsake us, you don't just say leave us and say figure it out or, or you're on your own now. But you come and you help us and you 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 pour into us and, and you give us that soul soothing rest. And so I thank you for that, God. And I pray as we continue to learn more about you and about your Holy Spirit and about your word, Lord, that you would just inform our learning, that we would become so uh, entranced by who you are and everything that you do and uh, that we would just love you more and more each and every single day. And so we thank you so much for everything that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do, Lord. And we pray that you would continue to be with us. We pray that you would bless our Sunday lunches, the hands that are preparing it, uh, that you would uh, bless the food to nourish our bodies, that we would have great conversations with our family or with our friends or whoever we're eating with, and that most importantly, you would keep us safe and healthy, God. And so we thank you, we love you, and we pray and ask all these things in your holy and precious name. And everybody said, amen, 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 amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our Sunday lessons, Minecraft Mondays, or Free Talk Fridays. Links to all of our playlists are down below in the description. Oh, here's the slide again. So make sure you go catch up on anything that you may have missed. Tomorrow for Minecraft Monday, the preteens are going to be competing in an MLG water bucket challenge where we will crown the winner of Arc Tower and our weekly champion. Every week we play Minecraft on our ARC Preteens realm. So if you would like to be a part of that, you know, you attended ARC Preteens and you want to play with us on Mondays, uh, then my email is also down below in the description. So send a request to my email. And if you can't or you don't want to play with us on Minecraft Mondays, I live stream the gameplay right here to our YouTube channel. Uh, so come hop in the chat every Monday starting at 1 p.m. and, you know, talk to me. We could crack some jokes and whatnot and we could just have some fun. Last week we finally triumphed over three weeks of technical difficulties and we finally finished our part two of Izzy's interview. And so this coming Friday, I have Sunday leader Aaron Reyes coming as com coming on as our guest. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's gonna be a good one. So I hope you guys are all staying safe and staying healthy out there and that you're finishing the school year strong. I know it can be a struggle sometimes. We're doing schoolwork from home, but keep going preteens. You got this, I'm praying for you guys. I believe in you, keep running hard. As the restrictions ease and as we go outside and do a little bit of travel, make sure you make wise decisions and in everything you do and say, glorify God. I'll see you right back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. for Minecraft Mondays. God bless you guys.